everyone and welcome back to my channel, A Painter's Vlog. My name is Julia and if you're new here, thank you so much for dropping in to say hello. So in today's Vlogmas number 16, I wanted to recreate Emma Chamberlain's pea, potato, and basil soup. I'm actually really new to Emma Chamberlain's channel comparatively. I know that she's been around for many years or several years at least. I started watching her about six months ago and since then I've watched every episode and of course my nephew and niece are super on point with Emma Chamberlain. They, they watch every single episode as well and sometimes we'll even watch together. I absolutely love the aspect of empowerment that Emma Chamberlain exudes in simply being herself and being authentic and her latest video really struck a chord with me because it was very different. The very previous video to the soup episode was talking about her anxiety and how she was having troubles coming up again with that. I think that struggles and ups and downs with your mental state are a lot more common and a lot more frequent than I think that people want to talk about. I absolutely love that she's bringing light to mental health and talking basically about her own journey with it. And I know that a lot of people in the past couple weeks, because she hadn't uploaded, were feeling a little bit worried. So it was awesome to see her post this episode that was all about self-care in my opinion. She's really been leaning into her cooking and she sees it as a hobby that actually helps her wake up in the morning, which to me is pretty awesome. So I think that we should really lean into those aspects of ourselves, the things that bring us comfort and, and absolute joy lean into that and then share it with the world so i loved the last episode it was definitely different and let's dive in i'm figuring that emma bought her ingredients at trader joe's because i've seen those english peas there for pretty much every time i go and I cannot remember the last time I ate a green pea. I do like peas and kind of what Emma was saying, I haven't had them in a while. So I was just like, you know what? This is a recipe that sounds very unique. I wanna try this. And I'm also the type of cook in the kitchen that just kind of throws things together and wishes for the best. No, I'm at a point in my cooking style where I know which flavors combine together and taste well together. So I honestly never would have thought to pair English peas with basil and potato. But number one, I actually go with high quality ingredients. I got all of these ingredients today at Trader Joe's. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. Here's the ingredients that Emma's recipe calls for, and I actually wrote the recipe out for you. So if you wanna go ahead and screenshot this, this is Emma Chamberlain's English Pea Potato and Basil Soup. And I'll leave the recipe in the description box below. First of all, she calls for obviously English peas. So you can find these at Trader Joe's. They're ready to use, they are not organic, but I don't know, Trader Joe's typically has high quality ingredients. Of course, we have the potatoes. I just picked up like a buttery gold potato that's really smooth in flavor and texture. We have the chives here. Trader Joe's actually literally had one shallot left, so I bought that one remaining shallot. And I also picked up a red onion, which I think is probably a little bit similar in flavor, and so I'm gonna use the one shallot and then maybe a quarter of the red onion. I bought one bulb of garlic, so I think according to her recipe, I'm gonna use one to two cloves out of this bulb. This is the Better Than Boolean that she was talking about, the seasoned vegetable base, and just for the record, I have been using this product for so long. Let me go ahead and hold it up to the camera here. But I have been using this product for, for years now. Um, one of my roommates in New York turned me onto this and it is awesome. It's the best bullion that I've ever had and way better than the cubed bullion that you'll ever, 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 ever find in a million years. So highly, highly recommend. This is gonna take your soup game up 500 levels. This is Parmigiano Reggiano Strovecchio cheese, obviously product of Italy. And what I liked about this particular Parmesan cheese was that it's aged for three years and made with raw milk. So how can you go wrong? And it's just literally cut off the wheel of Parmesan cheese. So love that. Got the organic basil in the back and we have some Himalayan pink sea salt and black pepper and a nice high quality olive oil. I think that about covers it for all of the ingredients. And if you wanna know the exact amount of ingredients, just be sure to refer to the description box below. I'm really excited to try this soup and see if these unique flavors really do blend together as much as Emma claims that they do. So first things first, we need to get our potatoes cut. So probably gonna go for the same amount that Emma cooked. I might actually only need one potato. She actually cut little circles. I think her potatoes were a little bit smaller, so she cut circle shapes. But I am going to make cubes. 
one medium sized potato was enough for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that potato in a boiling pot of water and boil for about 15 minutes or until soft. I'm gonna consult Martha Stewart on the illustrious English peas because I'm not actually sure why they're called English peas so let's go ahead and dive in and see what Martha says. She says also known as shelling peas or garden peas these are the same peas that are frozen. The pod is not eaten just the peas inside. One pound of pods yields about a cup of peas. Blanching peas takes just a minute or two. So Emma Chamberlain was right blanching these peas takes one to two minutes. Pro tip, if you want your water to boil faster, simply run the tap water out of your faucet really, really, really hot, and it saves so much time just kind of waiting for the water to boil on the stove. Very simple, but highly effective. If you guys are wondering where I got this amazing cutting board, my partner actually made this. So it's like, let me see, about three or four different types of wood. He's a true artist. Let's go ahead and cut this shallot, hoping that it doesn't have any brown stuff on it like Amit did or any mold or anything like that. And my shallots looked a little bit funky. So now that we've got these chopped, I'm actually gonna chop up a quarter, maybe a little bit more of the red onion because I do find that they're similar in flavor. Now that the onion is cut, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to garlic. These are just um, basically medium-sized cloves. They're not too huge or anything like that, and I think this will give it give it a good flavor. Keep in mind that if you are making this soup, there's already garlic in the vegetable base in the soup base that you'll be using. So this is just gonna be like an added bonus. Looks like our potatoes are now in full effect boiling, so they're cruising. We have a full-blown operation here. We're going to throw our English peas into the pot. Okay, Google, set a timer for two minutes. All right, two minutes, and that's starting now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those chives cut up while the three items on the stove are rocking and rolling. I also tend to agree with Emma in that chives and green onion are fucking killer on so many things. I, I love the way that chives look. I just think that they're so beautiful when they're finely chopped. I eat them on tacos. I like to eat them in Thai and Asian food. I always have these on hand in my kitchen and pro tip, just have them pre-cut and put them in a Tupperware container and keep them in your fridge. That way you don't have to laboriously cut them every time. Oh my God, you guys, Google said that the peas are done. Also, if you're wondering what this big space is behind my stove, it's the microwave space because I don't like microwaves. We've got a couple English peas to try, so let's give this a go. Hmm. I think they're done. And also, I'm gonna be boiling everything together in the end, according to Emma, so let's go ahead and get these off and strained. tip and I actually do this with pasta is after I strain it I actually put it right over the pot that's still steaming with heat that way it kind of keeps them warm also how cute are these onion savers I use this all the time I mean this is in constant rotation inside my fridge shallots are looking good so what we want to do is we want to get the shallots semi soft because they are gonna be boiled one last time into the soup. Amos recipe calls for half a cup of fresh basil. So this is, as I mentioned, organic basil. <sighs> Woo. So fragrant. I don't know about you, but I absolutely adore fresh herbs. If you've been cooking with dried herbs for a long time, do yourself a favor and just start to explore with fresh herbs. Okay, now to our onions, we're going to want to add the chopped garlic. Potatoes are now complete, so I'm going to go ahead and drain those. This is the juicy part, the fun part that Emma's talking about in her video where she's like, all the grunt work is done. It was like, all the dirty work was done and it, it was almost time to assemble. Now that we have our peas boiled, our potatoes boiled, our onions are sauteed, the garlic is in there, I'm actually gonna turn that heat off real quick. What we do is we add six cups of water to the onion and the garlic. Now 
for seasonings. Emma's recipe calls for one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon pepper. All right, guys, the star of the moment, better than bullion. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the texture inside so you can see she's ooey, she's gooey. Look at that. Like buying a pre-made one is kind of scary, right? Because you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. This is gonna be, like I said, your soup game changer. So let's go ahead and put in three tablespoons, which is what Emma's recipe calls for. Once this broth mixture comes to one more final boil, we're gonna go ahead and put it into our blender. Guys, let me tell you a little something. And I mean business here, I mean business. If you guys want to be a serious cook, or say you love smoothies, say you really love butter, say you love homemade soups, say you want a blender that's all in one, I'm here to tell you that you need a Vitamix. No, there is no promo code in the description box below. Behold the holy grail of all blenders, and no, you cannot persuade me to buy a Ninja or any other kind. I bought this Vitamix off my ex boyfriend Joe and he was actually getting a new model and he sold me this blender for $200. Not much of a discount, come on. But anyway, he sold me this blender and this is one of the best investments I've ever made. You can make peanut butter in here, you can make the creamiest hummus you ever had. By the way, make sure you take the shells off the chickpeas because it, do it really does make a difference. You can make hot soups in here because the blender actually heats your soup up. You can make butter. I've actually made fresh butter in here with herbs. This blender is just a killer, killer instrument for your kitchen. Let's go ahead and dump this mixture into our blender. And she is very hot, look at this. Oh my God, that's a lot. That almost filled up the entire blender. After I give it a spin, I'm gonna add the basil and the 1 4th cup Parmesan, which is fresh grated from our chunk. So hopefully from this little mini chunk. It was a little bit more on the expensive side, but I wanted to really try this Parmesan. I would actually put this blender on low, so don't blast it in outer space right off the bat. Make sure that your dial is on the lowest setting down here. So right now it's on 10. If I did that, the whole thing would be flying around. All right, so you see I'm on the lowest variable here. Steam's already coming out the top, so I just wanna be a little bit careful. All right, now let's add the basil. So again, this is the half cup of basil, fresh basil. Pour that in. Emma was actually a little bit disconcerted because she thought that the basil would turn the blend a little bit more green, which she was hoping for. In my brain, I had imagined a vibrant green broth for my soup, but the vegetable bouillon that I added into the soup base just turned it kind of brown. We have the parmesan. I'm gonna go for the heftier grate on this. Ooh, she's hard. She's tough. I'm gonna toss this into the blender. Quarter cup of parmesan cheese going in. Now let's go ahead and give this a thorough blend. I'm still gonna let this top breathe because it is steaming pretty vehemently and I don't want to explode this puppy. And now I'm really gonna let her crank. Okay, <laughs> Oh God, be careful. I didn't expect this, but the smell of cheese is very fragrant, oh my God. Oh wow. I don't know why, maybe it was the type of cheese I got, but oh my God, this is like really fragrant. The soup is blended thoroughly, so I'm gonna put it in the pot, mix everything together, bring it all to one more full boil, and then the moment of truth, we're gonna taste it. let this boil one final time and then the fun part we get to give this beautiful soup a taste English pea, potato, and basil soup. Recipe by Emma Chamberlain. Mmm, smells really good. The final crowning touch of the soup is going to, going to be 
to add a little more of the Parmesan cheese and some chives. All right, that looks really beautiful. <sighs> From start to finish, I'd say the soup took about, I would say 35 minutes from start to finish and altogether the ingredients were around 20 bucks. So Emma was pretty accurate in her $17 assumption if she had gone to a restaurant and spent that much on this soup. So let me go ahead and make sure that I get a P in here. Of course you gotta blow on it. <laughs> make sure that it's cooled off. Alright, initial reaction. Here we go. Going in. Let me get a potato. Okay. All right, the potato's gonna take a minute to, yeah, let me get a small potato. Okay, here we go. Second bite, going in. I have my initial thoughts. I'll share them with you after the second bite because I wanna make sure I get all the ingredients. Okay, third bite, going in. I just want to get the broth this time. Listen, I want to give you guys an accurate, you know, full reading on the soup here. We need to do Emma justice here. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to be way over the top or anything like that, but honestly, this soup is really freaking good. Like it's, it's borderline amazing. I'm not just saying that because I love Emma Chamberlain, but like honestly, this soup is amazing. <laughs> All right, I need a better descriptor. The soup is, let's think about flavors here. The soup is pungent because it has that deep, rich, aromatic flavor of the Parmesan, but it also has that spice and, you know, urgency of the basil, the fresh basil. The English peas are a very calming effect. That's a pretty neutral flavor, but it's actually a surprise within the soup. And I like that the, the peas are fresh because they have a crispness to it. It's not like the canned peas where they're all like soggy and stuff like that. And the potato, come on. Like who doesn't like potato in the soup? But I think, I think the, honestly, I think the aspect that shines the most in this soup isn't even really the peas, it's actually the broth. And I find that when you make a soup, if your broth is on point and you keep your ingredients relatively simple, like you would have two or three superstars in the soup, I wouldn't overload it with too many ingredients because then you have too many, you know, cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, within your soup. But like, as long as you have a good base, a good broth, you're good to go. And this broth is fire. I think I might, take it upon me now to, in the future, continue adding Parmesan cheese to the broth. On a scale of one to 10, I would rate this soup between a 7.5 and an eight. Um, I think it's really, really good. I don't really know what could make it better, so, but I just don't really rate things as high as 10 unless it's like, holy shit, I'm having an orgasm while I'm eating it. And um, I'm close to that, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But overall, highly, highly, highly recommend Emma Chamberlain's potato, English green pea, and basil soup. It is fire, you guys. So seriously, just go give it a try. And if anything, just get in the kitchen and fool around and have fun. This is just your message and your universal reminder to take care of yourself. Make sure that you're listening to your intuition and just do what makes you feel good. So thank you so much, Umber Chamberlain, for giving us this gift of this amazing, beautiful soup. But way more than that, your presence, you're just such a force in this world. I hope that you keep cooking in the kitchen and you know do whatever heals your heart and makes you feel good. And that goes for everyone. So in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for giving my channel a watch. And if you liked this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'm actually in the process of growing my channel right now. So as always, have a beautiful day and 
I'll see you in the next one. Damn, this soup really is good.